feel bad when they find out if you could take it all back. Would you? This is my last year and it's kind of bittersweet because, you know, I made a lot of friends, had some nice memories. I'm excited, um, super eager to start the year, you know, should be fun. Finish strong, right? Yeah, finish strong. That's the goal. You can see enthusiasm and smiles on their faces as they enter our main hall here at the Dobbs Ferry campus. I know the same thing is going on in Manhattan and the Bronx and even in our many online courses. So it's good to be back. I'm so happy that I came to Mercy. I was provided so much support. Even now, I have, if I'm going through like an issue with class or anything like that, I have a great support system. So I know who to go to and I never feel alone. When you're replaced with something that is 3D and you're able to manipulate it and you're able to bring it up, backwards, down, you can't really do that with a picture. Every biology major has the opportunity to engage in authentic research. Being a first generation college student makes me feel so proud to be able to push the legacy for my parents who worked hard here in America. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor to celebrate the legacy of Neil, uh, sorry, Mr. Judge as he was affectionately known. Find a quiet spot somewhere in this beautiful space. Do some homework, study for a test, and order your cap and gown. There's nothing he'd love more than that. Thank you very much. conversations, seeing great people. This is great. Everyone should come. If you missed it, come next year. Probably the most important light that colleges and universities produce is the reflected light, the accomplishments of their alumni. Mercy embraced me and took me in, and then several years later I had a Mercy degree, and here I've used that degree to leverage to be where I'm at today. My parents will not stop talking about how proud they are of me. I feel like every time I walk into the living room and they're on the phone with someone, they're just talking about how I'm in my master's already. I had a great experience in Mercy College. My behavioral science major professors, they were amazing. They changed my life in a way. Congratulations, class of 2023! Happy graduation, everybody! From your pack mentors, congratulations to the class of 2023! Go Mavs! Congratulations, class of 2023! I know that all the hard work I've put into these past four years have finally paid off. I have a little bit more left to go, but it just makes me feel accomplished that I finally can get to where I want to be. Congratulations from Mercy Manhattan! Congratulations, class of 2023! Congratulations, class of 2023! Open to learning more, having tough discussions. That's how we get better as a people, and that's how we continue to love and nurture each other. So, thank you for having me today. Congratulations! Congratulations, class of 
2023. Congratulations! I feel like I've opened up a new chapter and I've really entered into that, that peace in myself, you know, being able to rise up as an adult and speak for myself, be myself.
Ladies and gentlemen, señoras y señores, good morning, buenos días. Welcome to the 88th commencement exercises of Mercy College. I am Dr. Eva Fernandez, the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Our program today includes distinguished student and guest speakers and the conferral of the degrees on our graduates. For the enjoyment of all, we ask that the students and audience remain in your seats until the conclusion of the ceremony. Will you please rise for the national anthem? Please join Megan Vega, class of 2023, in singing our national anthem. Megan. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Bravo, Megan, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is now my distinct honor to introduce the 12th president of Mercy College, Timothy L. Hall. President Hall. Thank you, Provost Fernandez. Good morning, welcome to the 88th commencement of Mercy College. It's great to be here celebrating our 2023 graduates. As we overlook the majestic Hudson River, today we celebrate the de determination and hard work of our graduates. You ought to be proud of yourselves. All of us at Mercy certainly are. Today is a special day for our graduates and for those who have supported them along their educational journey. We'll recognize our students in due course, but I want to take a moment to call attention to some of the people who've contributed to the achievements of our graduates. First, would the parents of our graduates stand? Would our parents please stand wherever you are? Thank you, thank you. We recognize you for the financial sacrifices you may have made to help our graduates see this day and for all the support and encouragement you've offered them. Would the spouses and children of our graduates stand? Spouses and children. Thank you. You also have made sacrifices to support our graduates through term tape papers and final exams, and perhaps you've endured the focus of their work that sometimes cut into their time with you. I know your support was crucial in bringing our graduates to this moment. Then would all the other relatives and friends of our graduates stand? Other relatives and friends.
Thank you. I know you're proud of the accomplishments of these graduates and that they appreciate your support and encouragement. Then would Mercy College faculty stand? Our Mercy College faculty, <laughs> mostly behind me. The individual achievements of our students we recognize today rise directly from the labor and the dedication of our faculty. You have made a mark on their minds and their imaginations, and I'm sure many of our graduates will remember you longer even than they remember some of the specific things you taught them. Finally, would members of the college staff and administration please stand? Although the heart of the college is the classroom, it takes the efforts of staff and administration to sustain and support the work of our faculty and to create an environment in which learning is prioritized and which it's possible. This is a collective effort at Mercy College whether faced with challenges or celebrating milestones, we've been proud to support our graduates during your journey here. Again, congratulations to you all. Enjoy this moment. Pay close attention to it. And now I turn it back to Provost Fernandez. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Hall. At this time, I'd like to introduce the School of Liberal Arts Dean, Dr. Peter West, who will announce awards. Good morning, everyone. I'm pleased to recognize students today who have received special academic awards in the School of Liberal Arts. And we begin with an award from the Advertising Club of Westchester. And I ask Professor Mark Palmieri to please come forward to help present this award. The Advertising Club of Westchester Award is given to a student within the Communication and Arts Department that has shown outstanding work and has displayed a determination to continue their studies on a graduate level here at Mercy. The recipient of this year's award is Caitlin Kreider. Next, I'd like to call out Professor Lou Grasso to help present the Dennis and Faye T. Greenwald Fund for Graduate Studies Award. The Dennis and Faye T. Greenwald Fund for Graduate Studies is given to an English major who plans to pursue a graduate degree. The recipient of this year's award is Nelson Adeliana, presented, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've messed up here. We're gonna start over. We're gonna first, this is the, um, I'm going to call Professor Chris Lotz up to present this award. My fault. Please, Lou, if you want to have a seat. My apologies. This is for Professor Chris Lotz, who's going to help us present the, De the Dennis and Faye T. Greenwald Fund for Graduate Studies Award. The, the Dennis and Faye T. Greenwald Fund for Graduate Studies is given to an English major who plans to pursue a graduate degree. The recipient of this year's award is Nelson Orellana.
I'm going to call Professor Lou Grasso back up for his big moment to present the Dot Adams Memorial Award. The Dot Adams Memorial Award honors outstanding work and excellence in journalism and media. The recipient of this year's award is Stephanie Langhorst. I'm going to call Professor Lotes back up. It's like a game of musical chairs up here. This is for the Eileen McMahon Award. Therese McMahon Nieves, Mercy Class of 1966, endowed an award which honors Eileen McMahon, Professor Emerita of English Literature, and her dedication to the arts. It is given to a student who has exemplified dedication and active participation in drama, oral interpretation of literature, or the arts. The recipient of this year's award is Jenny Fabricio. Our next award is a Graduate Award for Excellence in Cybersecurity, and I'd like to call Dr. John Yoon up. The Graduate Award for Excellence in Cybersecurity is given to the year's outstanding cybersecurity major and is awarded to Justin Vedas. And the final awards are going to be given out by Dr. Chris Lotz again, if I can call Dr. Lotz back up. First, the Joanne Christie Bowl for the Outstanding Undergraduate Student of English Literature is given to the year's Outstanding Undergraduate English Major and is awarded to Megan Vega. The Joanne Christie Bowl for the Outstanding Graduate Student of English Literature is given to the year's Outstanding Graduate English Literature Student and is awarded to Tim Timothy Brosnan. The Barbara Sullivan Memorial Award is an annual award of $500 and is given to a graduating senior who will pursue a graduate degree in English literature. This year's recipient is Daniela Vasquez. The Eileen McMahon Excellence Writing Scholarship is awarded to a student who has completed an undergraduate degree program in the School of Liberal Arts and shown outstanding work in their college years.
This student displays a determination to continue their graduate studies at Mercy, pursuing writing or the teaching of writing. This year's recipient is Juliana Belletto. Congratulations to all of our award recipients in the School of Liberal Arts. Thank you, Dean West, and congratulations to all the award winners. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Albert Alcantara from the School of Liberal Arts, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in cybersecurity today. Albert will offer the undergraduate student address on behalf of the class of 2023. Good morning students, faculty, parents, and friends. My name is Albert Alcantara Soriano, and I am a cybersecurity graduate. First of all, I'd like to thank God for being my strength, my strength and firm foundation throughout this amazing journey. He's the reason why I'm standing up here, and I trust he will still fulfill his plans in me. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Dr. Yoon and Dean West for this amazing opportunity. I am honored to stand here before you all today as we celebrate our achievements and look forward to the future. Today marks a significant milestone in our lives as we come to the end of this chapter and prepare to embark on new journeys. When I picture my college graduation, I can guarantee you that I never would have thought of me standing up here and wearing all black. I was just a regular kid from the Dominican Republic, and I never would have thought of this being possible. Having to reflect on the past few years is not an easy task at all, so I'll do my best to keep it concise. I remember when I started college back in the Dominican Republic at the age of 18. I was very excited to be part of one of the first cybersecurity programs in my country. But then, a few years later, I had to move to the United States, and my life totally changed. I was very intimidated by the fact that I was moving to a whole different country without knowing anything about its culture or anything about its language. I thought that this was it. I thought that I had to forget about pursuing my dreams and my passion in cybersecurity. But no, deep inside I knew that this was what I wanted, so I decided to keep chasing it because this is really what I wanted. The first few months were really tough. But one thing I can say is that when I had to decide what college to choose from, Mercy College stood out immediately. Not only because of the great cybersecurity program, but also because of how balanced my life was going to be from a work-study perspective. As semesters went by, I started to participate in workshops, research, and competitions, including the PICO CTF, or PICO Capture the Flag. For those of you who are not familiar with this, this is an international computer security and privacy challenge in which cybersecurity students put their skills into practice and compete against each other. This was a one-of-a-kind experience, not only because I was able to show what a Mercy cybersecurity graduate is made of, but also because I was able to share and interact with thousands of colleagues and students on the same field. Mercy has taught me a lot. I've learned how to be a very person, academically speaking. I've learned how to be a very peer and give an extra hand to those who need it. After all the years in this great institution, I can say that adapting to this whole new system was not easy at all, but the efforts amidst the struggle did pay it off. But today is not only about celebrating our past accomplishments. It is also about looking forward to the future with optimism and excitement. We have the power to shape our own destinies, pursue our passions, and chase our dreams. We have grown as a community together and as individuals, so please let us not forget the values that have brought us this far. Hard work, 
determination, and perseverance. Finally, let us take a moment to thank those who have helped us along the way, our families, our friends, our teachers for being our support system, our shell leaders, and our mentors. Without them, we would certainly not be here today. Personally, I'd like to thank my parents, my brother, my girlfriend, for always encouraging me and pushing me to the limit to get the best of me every single day. My dear class of 2023, congratulations on your achievements and best of luck as we move forward. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you, Albert, congratulations. It's now my pleasure to introduce Timothy Brosnan, who's receiving a master's degree in English today. Timothy will offer the graduate student address on behalf of the class of 2023. Timothy. Well, good morning. I can't believe someone actually gave a loud mouth like me a microphone on such an important day. What a mistake. <laughs> Um, when I first got the notification from Dr. West, Dean of the School of Liberal Arts, that I'd been nominated to speak before you today, and the realization kicked in that my performance in this incredibly transformative English program hadn't gone unnoticed, that the faculty over in the cozy Mayor Hall so valued my academic and extracurricular contributions over these two years, I was left with no other feeling than gratitude. I call the English department transformative because I am not the same person I was when I first registered for this master's program. I joined in the fall of 2021 because I felt stuck in an endless cycle of wasted potential and stagnation. I really didn't know what to do with myself, with my life, or with my career. And now as we say goodbye to the spring of 2023, I believe the journey I was privileged enough to embark upon awakened in me a state of mind I haven't experienced in some time one of confidence, determination, and pride, the result of each professor I've had the pleasure of learning from, motivating me to reevaluate myself as a man, as a student, and as a citizen of not just my own local communities, but of the world. Dr. Boreas Sachs, whose magic and literature class reminded me that the inexplicably mystical wonders of the world are always present in even the most unlikely places. Dr. Laura Prozac, who opened my eyes to the constantly evolving nature of language and learning and inspired me to participate in groups that seek to strengthen equitable and diverse learning pedagogies. Dr. David Fritz, who introduced me to the concept of humanism and reinforced the idea that there is tremendous value in the celebration of the individual. Dr. Richard Medoff, whose in-depth course on otherness instilled a sense of validation of identity in whatever form that takes. Dr. Sean Dugan, who lifted the veil between monster and humanity, demonstrating that with an effort to understand the things that lurk in the dark, they become a lot less scary. Dr. David Kilpatrick is probably the most philosophically intelligent person I know, and I honestly can't tell you exactly what he does without frying my brain all over again. But the conviction with which he demands you attempt to shape your perspective is an art in and of itself. Dr. Chris Lotz, whose excitement and encouragement for authentic interpretation is so palpable, you can't help but share in his joy for the material, who asks little more than to be unapologetic in your personal quest for confidence and acceptance. Outside my own classrooms, I've been fortunate to interact with the Mercy College community in extracurricular capacities that cultivated my own pedagogies and leadership skills. Working with Dr. Kristen Keckler on Mercy's Red Hyacinth Journal gave me the chance to appreciate my peers from a unique lens. The journal's poems, stories, and fine art submissions allowed me to better acknowledge the creativity of the entire student body. Professors Rob Reiser, Liz Fritz, and Lisa Quinones, all of whom so graciously accepted me as an assistant and tutor, provided me with the opportunity to better understand the academic struggles facing the student as well as the instructor greater influencing my interest in educating and providing students support. Yes, I am a transformed man, a sculpted version of myself I never really anticipated I could be. I owe all of that to you fine people who gave me the space and support to consider how I could apply your wisdom to achieve my goals. At 31 years old, I'd hardly consider myself a spring chicken. Sometimes my hips hurt before I even get out of bed, and not too long ago, I literally threw my back out by bending over ever so slightly to retrieve my lunch from the refrigerator. 
but with whatever life left I'm afforded on this great earth, I intend on taking the lessons and values ingrained in me by this program and its faculty and nurturing a personal and professional future that reflects the curious, the diverse, the magical, the triumphant education I received here at Mercy College. I don't know if anything I've said here today will leave any lasting impression, but I want to thank you, my professors, for giving me such an invaluable experience under your tutelage, and you, my peers, for challenging me both in and out of the classroom, for allowing me to collaborate with you on fresh ideas and contemporary solutions. The camaraderie we've developed has been one of my greatest joys throughout this adventure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Timothy, and congratulations to you. President Hall will now preside over the conferring of the honorary degree. Assisting is Mercy College trustee Jim Jenkins. President Hall, it's my distinct pleasure to present to you Jorge Ramos to receive his honorary degree. Jorge Ramos, as an Emmy award-winning journalist and retired news anchor, leading Telemundo New York's flagship evening newscast, Noticiero 47, you're a pioneer of Spanish language broadcasting in New York City. You made your entry into broadcasting, working as an announcer and producer at radio stations WKVM and WQBS, both located in Santos, Puerto Rico. In 1976, you moved to New York City to pursue opportunities in theater and broadcast. Throughout your four-decade career, you covered hundreds of major local and national events, including elections, papal visits, tragic natural, natural disasters, and United States pre presidential inaugurations. A gifted communicator, you conducted interviews with luminaries across various fields. Your investigative reports led to the capture and conviction of dangerous fugitives. As a result, you were awarded a special citywide recognition by then commissioner of the New York City Police Department, Raymond Kelly. During the tragedy of September 11, 2001, you and your news team stayed live on the air for six consecutive days with no commercial interruptions. Your role went beyond that of a traditional local news anchor. You traveled regularly, serving as a correspondent for more extensive political specials like the presidential election in the Dominican Republic and the gubernatorial inaugurations in Puerto Rico. In addition to seven, seven Emmy Awards, you were honored by the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences with an Emmy Silver Circle Lifetime Achievement Award in 2016. To mark your retirement in 2018, Telemundo New York permanently renamed their main news broadcast audio, the Jorge Ramos Studio. In retirement, you've remained a fixture among the New York and New Jersey Latino communities, continuing your work as a mentor and a public speaker. You graduated from the University of Puerto Rico with a bachelor's degree in humanities. Now, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the state of New York and the board of trustees of Mercy College, I am proud to confer upon you Jose Ramos, the degree of Doctor of Letters, honoris causa, with all rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the newest Mercy College alumnus, Dr. Jose Jorge Ramos, to give the commencement address. Thank Dr. You. Ramos. Thank you so much. Well, well, well. 
Israel. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, President Holm. To the Mercy College chairs, faculty, and everyone who has made this day possible, thank you for the warm welcome. And of course, President Holm, thank you, not just for this recognition, but for your nine years of outstanding service of this fine institution. I wish you a very happy and well-deserved retirement. Welcome to the club. <laughs> From now on, you're going to be the house husband in charge of keeping everything in the house clean and neat. Okay. Uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you some points how to do that. <laughs> I stand here today deeply humbled to share this special occasion with you. I must confess, I'm a bit feeling a bit emotional because in many ways, today feels like my graduation. You see, although I earned my bachelor's degree from the University of Puerto Rico almost 50 years ago, I did not attend my graduation ceremony. So to finally get to wear this beautiful and elegant robe, and to do it alongside you, the Mercy College class of 2023, it is truly an honor. Today is a day of celebration. We celebrate all the long hours and late nights you spent working toward this goal. You did it. Congratulations on your remarkable achievements. As I look back on my career for a story to help illustrate the lessons I have learned, I found myself going even further back to when I was in your position. At your age, it's all tomorrows. Your lives now are mostly hellos, possibilities, and the anticipation of what's to come. At 73, yes, I am 73 years old. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, same age of Mercy College. That was in 1950 when Mercy College was founded and the year yours truly was born. So happy birthday to Mercy College and to me. <laughs> so at my age, there are a lot more yesterdays, but with all those yesterdays comes the beautiful gift of perspective and recognizing the things that truly matter. I am sure many of you feel today as if you are on the edge of something big. You are filled with excitement, ready and determined to start your life. I also felt the same way. And yes, that drive is necessary. And it is one of the many qualities that will carry you through life, both personally and professionally. But what might come harder is learning to recognize the moments when you need to slow down, to be present, because it is very easy to lose sight of yourself while you are working on a dream. And I'm sure that all of you have a dream. Keep on pursuing your dream. I mentioned earlier, I wasn't at my graduation. I didn't attend because I had already started working, as President Hall said, at a local radio station. And I was so eager to start building my future that I didn't take time to reflect on what I had already built. One more thing perspective has shown me is that while discipline skills and talent are all important elements to achieving success, life is really about moments and people. Moments like today when you reflect and celebrate and people like the ones 
who have made today possible your parents, grandparents, friends, and loved ones. It is because of their guidance, their support, love, and sacrifices over many years that you are here today. So, graduates, my first advice as you embark on this new path as independent adults, don't take those who love and support you for granted. La familia es lo más importante. They are the ones who will provide the sense of stability and connection that makes it easier to endure difficult times. I was blessed with two loving parents who worked tirelessly to provide for me, my brother, and my two sisters. I had great admiration for my father. He was smart and resourceful. I wanted to follow in his footsteps and maybe be an engineer just like him. That is until the first time I visited him at work. Papi was a manager of an industrial cast iron company. To get to his office, you had to find your way through a maze of heavy machinery on the factory floor. It was loud and it reeked of diesel fuel. As soon as the fumes hit my nose, I knew this path wasn't for me. But how else? How else could I emulate him? Well, Papi loved to be informed, reading the newspaper every day. After dinner each night, he would settle down in the living room with me right by his side, watching the evening news. That's where my dream started. One day, I could be that TV news anchor reporting the news of the day. In 1976, after working at the local radio station for a few years, I reached a point where I felt like I needed a change in the direction of my personal and professional life. That's when my childhood best friend Miguel lent me a lifeline. Miguel was the first person who pushed me to consider a future beyond the shores of Puerto Rico. He was living in New York City and said, I was welcome to stay with him in his apartment until I settled down. A faithful friend is a sure shelter. Always keep your friends near. And if you have a good friend, keep them for life. Because sometimes when you most need it, that friend is there to give you the support that you need to keep on going in life. As you can imagine, moving to New York was an adjustment. I don't know how many of you have been to Puerto Rico, but let me tell you, the weather, ah, <laughs> the nice weather of the Caribbean, oh, the tropical breeze, ah, perfect for a cotton guayabera, and a piña colada under the palm tree. Fantastic. What do you think, Mr. President? You should go there now, right? After retirement. You will enjoy very much the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. Now, New York City, in January, I cried the entire first winter. Believe me, I couldn't stand the cold weather. I'm sure most of you don't like the cold weather, but uh, eventually things got easier. I discovered down jackets, but still can't stand the cold. I adapted, moved to my own apartment, made new friends, and created a routine for myself. Then one day, I ran into a former colleague from Puerto Rico. He was a program manager at Telemundo 47, and they needed a booth announcer to deliver the news. The only issue was this studio was in Newark, New Jersey. I lived in Queens, 
New York, and I didn't have a car. So things were going to be tough from Queens to Newark and without a car. Still, this was my chance. So every morning, listen to this, I would wake up with the sunrise, walk to the number seven subway station, and start my long, almost two hours commute to New Jersey. I already needed a coffee break when I got there before starting my work. And not only did that long commute take me to the career of my dreams, but also it is on that number seven train that one day I met my beautiful wife. and the mother to my two children, Alejandra and Gabriel. God always has a plan for you. Listen to God. He will guide your steps. <clears throat> Graduates, my advice to you is simple. Yes, work hard, be disciplined, be kind, adapt, try, fail, and learn from those mistakes. And make sure you don't repeat those mistakes. And as you start building towards all those tomorrows that lie ahead of you, remember to be present. Slow down, take a moment and enjoy the todays, because life is made in the small day-to-day -day moments. And as I look back on my life and career, that is what I treasure most. The moments and the people that open my life to opportunities and inspiration beyond what I could have expected. The moments I spent next to my father watching the news sparked a dream that became my life's work. The moments I spent alongside colleagues working on a shared mission added up to a rich 40-year career. The moments I spent on the number seven train commuting to work every day led to the chance encounter where I made my future wife. There was no Facebook or Instagram or Tinder or any of that. It was just meeting that person that God had for you, just the perfect person, and we have been together for more than 40 years. The moments I have spent with family and friends, building a life, being of service to others, that's what it's all about. No one, no one gets anywhere alone. Each of us is a product of those who supported us and those who believed in us. Those who taught and molded us, who instilled in us the values that guide our lives. We are their legacy. So graduates, today and from now on, listen to this. You are writing the story of your life. Stop and think for a moment. What do you want that story to be? What do you want that legacy to be? So today, there is a lot to be proud of and a lot to be cheerful about. So. Let's celebrate Mercy College Class of 2023. Congratulations. You did it. Applaudances. Felicitaciones. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
this such a, such a beautiful campus. When I just came in, it sparked some feeling of maybe I should come back to college, right? <laughs> Especially now that I have this special degree <laughs> to finish for real, okay? But thank you so much. Congratulations to all the parents. Applaud yourself because today is a day of celebration. Thank you. Thank you, President Hill. Dr. Ramos, thank you. Enhorabuena, felicitaciones. And it's never, we're here for you for whatever degree you would like to start with us. <laughs> and now to the graduates of the class of 2023, it's your turn. President Hall will preside over the conferring of the degrees. For the safety and comfort of all, we do ask that families and friends Stay seated during the conferral of the degrees. In the interest of time and safety, also please refrain from taking selfies while you walk across the stage. <laughs> President Hall, I have the distinct pleasure and privilege to present those students who have been certified by the registrar and by the faculty as having completed all of the requirements as established by the State of New York for awarding the following degrees. Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Master of Science, and Master of Arts. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Peter West, Dean of the School of Liberal Arts, to call the candidates forward to, to receive their degrees. Dean West. Thank you, Dr. Fernandez. At this time, we will recognize the candidates for the graduate degree. Sorry, yes, at this time, we would like to recognize the candidates for the graduate degrees from the School of Liberal Arts. Ilham Benzekri. Andrea M. Forlini, with distinction. Ariel De Jesus. Chi Yuan Wei, with distinction. Julissa McCarthy. Shakir Gray. Danielle Cabanas. Ahmed H. Almadami, with distinction. Darcia Umbaye. Paris Isaac, with distinction. Nikita Good Karingula, with distinction. Banutej Tej Malem. Sai Teja Gavala, with distinction. 
Li Wang with distinction. Muhammad Muhammadul Hassan Khan with distinction. Christopher Maldonado with distinction. Ryan Hall. Peter Anderson with distinction. Justin Veras. Stacy Noel Gray with distinction. Nicole C. Stevenson with distinction. Sadul Mateen Syed with distinction. Prabesh Dungana with distinction. Ederson I. Mazariego Linares with distinction. Sakila Shoha Kwaku Mensa And now, we will recognize the candidates for undergraduate degrees from the School of Liberal Arts. And congratulations to all our graduates. Adriana Lucia Romano, summa cum laude. Belsi Morales. Elijah Hunter. Michael N. Reyes, Jr. Zaya Joby Sampson, cum laude. Paige D'Ambrosio, summa cum laude. Eduardo Balbuena, cum laude. Mamun Alana Gray. Husnain Mir, magna cum laude. Jonathan Anthony Barnaby. Shazdri Nicole Rojas, cum laude. Olivia Marie Ward, cum laude. Serge Mbongi, cum laude. Tyrell Turney. Hansel Brito.
Patricia Kennedy, cum laude. Alba Gruyon. Fabiana Socoli. Detricia C. Richards. Justin Joseph. Andrew Kim. Emma Armas, magna cum laude. Gordon Morris Ward, cum laude. Megan Vega. Michael Petrolisi. Jordan Isaiah Davis. Everett Silver Jr. Gabrielle Marie Lebich, Magna Cum Laude. Juliana Maletto, summa cum laude. Lamont M. Stansbury. Derek Manuel Nasser. Chelsea A. Crespo. Adam Z. Pitter. Kerry McDermott, cum laude. Marlene Georgia Hannum, cum laude. Brian Alberto Grados. Matthew George Amick. Olinda Arana, summa cum laude. Albert Alcantara Soriano, summa cum laude. Timothy C. Brosnan, Jr., with distinction. Yadira Barrios. Alicia Scott. Chiffon Bowie. Victor Alfonso Vallecillo. Nervins G. Petit Frere. You and I, Hillary Lee Riano. Jacqueline Suzeth Perez Galvan, magna cum laude. Nelson E. Orellana, summa cum laude. Jacqueline Jesusa Arias. Caitlin Kreider. 
Summa Cum Laude. Laura Medina, Cum Laude. Diana Marie Plazier, Cum Laude. Gabriela Faria. Liam Toscanini McBride. Christian I. Caceres. Samuel Baden. Isaiah Ortiz. Brady Paul William Kiernan. Kelly Rosenfeld. Stephanie Lotta Jasmine Lankhorst, summa cum laude. Zachary Higgins. Hermari Ramirez. Betsy Bustan. Richard William Goldstein. Michael Gerard Farrell. Nicole Brooke Errico, summa cum laude. Vivica Jewel Wilson, cum laude. Noel Ramirez. Jenny Fabrizio. Nathan Toro. Daniel Vasquez, cum laude. Giselle Flores, cum laude. Zyra Lee Guevara. Tyron Tariq Lassane. Ren George Jacob. Anthony Kurishinko, magna cum laude. Torian Anthony Dawkins. Jaden Elijah McKinnis Jaziri. Andrew Rodriguez. <laughs> Jada Shamik Allen. Susie Paulino, magna cum laude. Sean O'Neill, magna cum laude. Jorge Salvador Margarin Cerda.
Nathaniel Blake. Nicholas Trevor Holmes. Maria Nolasco Flores. Daniel Sniffen. Monique V. Calfe. Magna Cum Laude. Dylan Perron, summa cum laude. Michael Neal. Lizette Altagracia Jimenez, cum laude. Nicole Daly. Cum laude. Caroline Berg. Isabella Alessandra Rulli. Sherrod Ovan. Thomas Henry Wellington Lentz. Magna Cum Laude. Max Lunati. Members of the Mercy College class of 2023, in just a moment as I confer your degrees upon you, you will join over 73,000 Mercy College alumni who've gone before you. You're joining an accomplished group of alumni, educators, CEOs, Major League Baseball players, attorneys, healthcare providers, and community leaders. We're proud to add your names to this well-distinguished list. Now, would all the graduates please stand? <laughs> By virtue, of the authority vested in me by the state of New York and by the Mercy College Board of Trustees, I formally confer the appropriate degree upon all graduates who have successfully completed their course of study. Now, it's time to turn your tassels from right to the left. Turn your tassels. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduating class of 2023. Please join me in congratulating our graduates. <laughs> graduates, you are now sons and daughters of Mercy College a great institution of higher learning. Down whatever paths life may lead you, I hope it leads you frequently back to this place. You'll always be welcome here. Now that you're alumni of Mercy, has that sunk in yet, alumni? I hope you will join and become actively engaged in the activities of our alumni association as the years pass you will be glad you stayed connected with your alma mater. Congratulations to you all. Thank you, President Hall. A couple of 
uh, remarks. Uh, the audience, we ask you to remain in place until the platform party and the graduate recessional is complete, but of course we ask that you clap really loudly. And then after the ceremony is completed, we do ask that you leave expeditiously as we have another graduation ceremony shortly after. My congratulations to the members of the class of 2023. My best wishes for an enjoyable summer, a rewarding future. This hereby concludes the 88th Mercy College commencement exercises. Thank you very much.